Hola, bangunas amigos! Did you know that nearly 100 years ago, a man named George Polya designed a four-step method to solve all kinds of problems? He stated that good problem solvers tend to forget the details and tend to focus on the structure of the problem, while poor problem focus on the opposite. Come and join me, finding why George Polya's important influencer problem solving in mathematics education. So the four steps of Polya's problem solving strategies are, first is understand the problem, figure out what is being asked, what is known, what is not known, what type of answer is required. Second one is make a plan. Come up with some strategies for solving the problem. The third one is execute the plan. Use the strategy chosen in step two to solve the problem. The fourth one, which is the last, is look back and reflect. Part of step four is to find a way to check your answer, preferably using the different method than what you used to solve the problem. <sighs> That's the four-step process that George Folia designed. And now, let's proceed the problem-solving strategies, mathematical problems involving patterns and recreational problems using mathematics. The problem-solving strategies that can be used. First is searching for patterns. Finding patterns is a strategy in which students look for patterns in the data in order to solve the problem. So then look for their items or numbers that are repeated or a series of events that repeat. So the goal is to look for items or numbers that are repeated or a series of events that repeat. So here we will look at some advanced example of finding a pattern method of problem-solving strategies. So, each hexagon below is surrounded by 12 dots. Letter A, find the number of dots for a pattern with 6 hexagons in the first column. Letter B, find the patterns of hexagon with 229 dots. So, this is the solution. Letter A, the number of dots for a pattern with 6 hexagons in the first column is 142. And letter B, if there are 229 dots, then the pattern has 8 hexagons in the first column. So the second problem solving strategy is working backward. So working backward is to start with the final solution and work back one step at a time to get to the beginning. It may also be helpful for students to understand that this is useful in many aspects of life, not just solving math problems. So here's an example. Sam's mom left a plate of cookies in the counter. Sam ate two of them, I uh, two of them. His dad ate three of them and they gave twelve to the neighbor. At the end of the day, only four cookies were left on the plate. So how many cookies did she make altogether? In this case, we know that the final cookie amount is four. So we put back backwards, we put back all the cookies that we taken or eaten, we can figure out what number they started with. Because cookies are being taken away, that we know subtraction, thus to get back to the original number, we have to do the add. If you take the four that are left and add twelve given to the neighbor, and add 3 that dad ate and then add the 2, sum 8, we find that some mom made 21 cookies. Let's explore the third in the fourth problem solving strategies. The third problem solving strategy is to draw a picture in diagram. So the draw a picture tactic is a problem solving strategy in which students visualize the situation. So this resource will assist you in teaching your pupils how to use a basic problem solving method that is simply for students of all levels to comprehend. So we have here the problem Angel has three different colored tops which are red, green, and white. She also have two different color skirts, yellow and pink, that she can wear with them. So the question here is, how many different combinations of skirt and tops Angel can wear? We have here three different colored tops, three green tops, three red tops, and three white tops, together with two yellow skirt and two pink skirt. So here are the different combinations of skirt and tops that Angel can wear. So and in all, she has six colored combination of tops and skirt. So making a list or table is a way to organize data presented in a problem. So these problem-solving strategies allow students to discover relationships and patterns among data. So this strategy helps students to bring a logical and systematic development to their mathematics. So we have here the problem, Alex has 24 marbles. Each marble is green or red. For every green marble, Alex has 3 red marbles. So how many red marbles does Alex have? So here is our column or chart. So the first one starts for green, red, and total. So the problem says that every green marble, Alex has 3 red marbles. So and so on. So we have here the pattern. So the every green marbles grows up by one, the red grows up by three, and the total grows up by four. Good day everyone. In this video, we will talk about mathematical problem involving pattern. 
So finding patterns is an important problem-solving strategy because many problems are similar and fall into predictable patterns. Being able to predict and spot patterns would help you solve a problem. But though we are not able to find the perfect mathematical expression of a sentence, once you are able to realize that there is a pattern, we can also resolve to trial and error by using the systematic repetitions that we have found. How do we know that there is a pattern? We will know when there is regularity, systematic repetition, and maybe numerical, visual, and se or sequential. Patterns show how things are connected, how things work, and how a group of objects acts in the same way. Supposed to say you decided to sign up for a half marathon. After three months of training with a coach, race is here. The gun goes off and you embark on attempting a really impressive feat. Your coach records your elapsed time in minutes for the first half first five miles of the race, the result are what appears in the table. So by using the elapsed time recorded for the first five miles, the coach is able to predict the total amount of elapsed time you will have to complete the race. Every time the miles go up by one, the elapsed time goes up by ten as well. The elapsed time can be found by multiplying the mile number by ten. There is a difference of one between each mile in the chart and there is a difference of ten between each elapsed time in the chart. So 13 miles times 10 elapsed time equals 13 or Almost there! Whee! Creational problems using mathematics. When we say recreational mathematics, is a mathematics done for recreation or as a hobby that intended to be fun. Typically, it consists of games, tricks, or puzzles that are most of the time designed for entertainment, pleasure, amusement, or fun. Recreational puzzles can also increase people's appreciation of mathematics as a whole. Logic puzzles are a common type of mathematical puzzle. For example, the popular Japanese puzzle game Sudoku is based on the logical placement of numbers. A game of logic, Sudoku doesn't require any calculation nor special math skills. All that is needed are brains and concentration. The goal of Sudoku is to fill in a 9x9 grid with digits so that each column, row, and 3x3 section contains the number between 1 to 9. At the beginning of the game, the 9x9 grid will have some of the squares filled in. Your job is to use logic to fill in the missing digits and complete the grid. Don't forget, a move is incorrect if the row contains more than one of the same number from 1 to 9. Second, any column contains more than one of the same number from 1 to 9. Lastly, any 3 by 3 grid contains more than one of the same number from 1 to 9. Alright, George Boyer is a permanent figure in the world of mathematics. In he has regarded as the father of the modern emphasis in math education and problem solving. I also found four suggestions from Polyas about what teachers can do to do help students solve problems. Suggestion 1. In order for students to understand the problem, the teacher must focus on fostering a student the desire to find a solution. It will always be a problem to get students to solve problems when they are not sure what to do. Suggestion 2. A second key feature of this first phase of problem solving is giving students strategies for getting acquainted with problems. Suggestion 3. Teacher should help students learn strategies to be able to work toward a better understanding of any problem through experimentation. Suggestion 4. If students are not sure how to solve a problem, they need strategies to hunt for the helpful idea. Alright, we all know that we should be fostering students from problem solving ability in our math classes. All just focus on finding unknowns in math as wide applicability to problems whether they are purely mathematical or more general. That's it. I hope you learn and enjoy our George Polyas adventure. Gracias. Adios. Yeah!